morning, everybody. My name is Derek Hart. I'm the Applications Manager here at Styles Machinery. Today, we're going to look at machining acrylic. Um, I know a lot of people are looking at machining acrylic these days. Everybody needs a sneeze guard. So we've decided to uh, focus on proper techniques for machining acrylic properly on your machine. Uh, we've getting a lot of calls from our customers who are going from wood over to acrylic to help with the demand right now. So I'd like to give them a few insights on how to do it properly, easily. So, Today we're going to be focusing on tooling, a little bit on materials, but more on the tooling itself of what the techniques, feed speeds, RPMs, cut directions, things like that that people have questions about. So whenever I cut acrylic, I use an O-flu cutter. And an O-flu cutter, and this is a single O-flu, is a, um, this is an upshare, it's a large void cutter. And from the end it looks like a crescent moon. Now this is a high helix upshare so that it, it allows it to shave that shaving off and get it up and out without re-welding back onto there. So a lot of people have problems with re-welding plastic. The acrylic's soft, it, it melts really easily. It gals up onto the cutter and just re-welds in place and starts pushing the part around. So a good O-flu up shear is what I recommend. Now, if we talk about uh, the cutter, we gotta talk about how do we machine it, right? And so, I made a, a little note over here so you can see the big question people have is, well, how fast do I go, right? So feed speed, this is a simple calculation for feed speed that I use, is the RPM times the number of cutting edges times the chip load. Now, one of my cutters here that I use has a recommended chip load of 0.12 to 1.4, so 0.012 to 1.4. So I go in the middle and go 0.013. So whenever I run, colleted tool like this. This is balanced 24,000 RPM. I never run it at 24,000 RPM because the longevity of my router, if I have any imbalance in this cutter over time, my router is going to have problems with that. So if I want to run faster than 24 or at 24, I need to find a tool like this thermal grip that's balanced at 30,000 RPM. So it's like driving your car. You never drive it all at full speed all the time. You want to give it some safety clearance in there. So if you want to go higher than 18,000 RPM on your acrylic, which a lot of people do, you need to have better balanced tooling, the tool holder itself. So in my example here, with my colony tool, I go 18,000 times the number of flutes at one flute, times my chip load, and I get 234 inches a minute. Now, the question people have is, how do I know this number? Well, what's chip load? Chip load is, quite literally the size of the chip coming off of the machine. So if you're cutting wood and you see flakes coming off and you have sawdust, that's your chip load. So plastics is the same thing. The size of that chip dictates the tool's ability to clear the, tool, clear the chip out. The heat from that cutting process attaches itself to that chip and leaves with it. That keeps your tool nice and cool, which helps your tool life. The hotter the tool, the more brittle it gets, it's gonna break off sooner, wear out sooner. So, People ask, how do I figure out chip load? Well, this is where your tooling manufacturer comes in. They make charts that say, on this type of tool, this configuration, and that material, I recommend this as my chip load. So an example of this, if I'm cutting melamine, and I have a two flute mortise and cutter, I go with a .2 chip load, which is a much higher number, so I can go faster. But if I want to go faster, this is a fixed number. I can't change this. I can change these two, right? So if I do the same math, and I say times two flute versus a one flute, I get a number that's bigger than this number, it's 468. So I just double my feed speed by changing the number of my flutes. So that's where people look at this speed and go, this is too slow, I need to go faster, when you can't make the chip any smaller or bigger, so you mess with these numbers. And the same thing happens here. If I go to 24,000 RPM, I can go faster, and I can't do the math in my head on that one, so we're not gonna, but you get the idea on what we've got going on here. So, couple, this is my feed speed in inches per minute, we're going metric, we just have to convert that to meters a minute. If we, so number one rule here, this number, tooling manufacturer. When they come in, go online, look at their charts, you'll find out exactly what tool they recommend at what uh, chip load. A couple other things to remember, whenever I'm cutting acrylic, I like, especially something this thick, um, I like cast acrylic over extruded. Cast gives you a better cut quality, a little bit better, better clarity. 
um, I like to do a roughing pass. And when I do a roughing pass, I leave one half a mil to one mil clearance on the bottom and the side. So I step the tool away and up. I'm not cutting all the way through yet, but I'm also not doing my final pass. So that way when I come through with my finish cutter, it's just shearing off that little bit of material that's left. That means my finish cutter, finish cutter stays sharper longer. And so if I'm using my finish cutter for everything, I'm not gonna get the edge quality over time that I like. Um, when we cut acrylic, we do a fine cut. So it's a, um, we want to do a fine cut. We like to do up shear because we want that chip to get up and out. If we have to use a down shear because the material's real thin and it's lifting, you gotta think about that. Where's that material gonna go? It's going back into the table. So we have to think about, I like an up shear the best I can. And then an old flute cutter. Um, yeah. So, if you have any questions, if you want to find out anything more about this, please uh, leave, leave us a note, ask questions, and we will answer your questions as we can. Thank you very much.